from CPRI and the CPRI Knowledge Hub, this is Research Minutes, a weekly look at new and important research in education. Today, we look at higher education in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic and new data reporting significant declines in enrollment at colleges across the country. I've never seen such a steep freshman enrollment drop in my entire career. Freshman enrollment losses account for 69% of the total undergraduate enrollment drop this fall. Pretty significant number. We welcome Mick Young Ryu, Research Publications Director for the National Student Clearinghouse Research Center. Ryu discusses two new sets of higher education data released by the Research Center in October. Our data shows that community colleges are having a particularly hard time right now facing the enrollment decline of 9.4% overall, nine times steeper than their pre-pandemic loss rate. And there are implications for schools and students in the months and possibly years ahead. It's reasonable to say it would take years to bring back lower income, disadvantaged young people who would have enrolled in college this fall if there were no pandemic-related disruptions. That's right now on Research Minutes. Hello and welcome to Research Minutes. I'm Keith Muller, Managing Editor of the CPRI Knowledge Hub. Today, we're happy to welcome McYoung Ryu. Research Publications Director for the National Student Clearinghouse Research Center. Thanks so much for joining us, McYoung. Glad to be with you. So today we're discussing two new sets of data released by the National Student Clearinghouse, which shed new light on how the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted both enrollment and transfer rates at colleges and universities across the country. To start, could you just tell us a little bit about the research itself? Uh, Is this data that the Clearinghouse Research Center regularly collects, or was this work driven in part by the pandemic? They are our brand new work, specifically designed for the age of COVID-19. We call them Rapid Response Research Publications, intended to show the impacts of COVID-19 on higher education enrollment generally, and student transfer in particular. Since the research center was created over a decade ago, we've been helping the education community and the general public by providing the current enrollment and degree data that we hold on behalf of colleges across the nation. Our publications have become the source of student success outcomes data that are objective, trustworthy, and timely. But timely has a new meaning in the age of COVID. We've never seen a crisis that happened so fast and so devastatingly. We used to feel great about publishing annual fall enrollments in December of the same year because you had to wait a lot longer for the iPads data to come out. But suddenly it made no sense to expect institutions and policymakers to be able to adapt and to understand the shifting needs of students by relying on several months old data. No industry can survive that way today. When the pandemic began, we saw this huge need for near real-time information. And to address that, we started to think differently about how we use and publish our data. Rather than wait for every single institution enrollment file to come in so we could count every student before publishing, we decide to report rapidly as enrollment files arrived, comparing each institution to its own prior year reporting as a pre-pandemic baseline. Institutions submit data several times per term, which allow us to update enrollment once a month. This means our analytic priorities are shifted a bit more towards speed rather than 100% confidence levels. So the data should be considered preliminary. As someone put it, it's like showing running vote tallies as they come in on election night with the person of precincts reporting right alongside to show where we are in the returns. Our report show 
a 54% institutional coverage as of September 24th, which is roughly one month into the fall semester. So these are brand new publication series. Stay informed with latest enrollment information series is updated once every month. And the transfer, mobility, and progress series updated twice per term, first of term and end of term. Now, with frequent data updates, we would show the picture getting clearer as the data accumulated. So with those caveats in mind, um, I would like to jump right into the findings, beginning with college enrollment. Um, the big headline from your work, it seems, is that undergraduate enrollment is down 4% this fall. And this downward trend appears steeper and more widespread than it did even in September. Could you walk us through what you learned there? The headline numbers that you've all probably seen are measured by year-over-year -year percent changes for the same institution September enrollment data in 2018, 2019, and 2020 across the three years. With more data coming in, enrollment picture worsened. Undergraduate enrollments are down 4%, revised from minus 2.5% two weeks prior, and graduate enrollments are up 2.7% instead of 3.9% growth two weeks prior. And combined, higher education enrollment is down 3% compared to minus 1.8% we previously reported. In other words, with more colleges reporting, the downward trends in undergraduate enrollment became steeper and the upward trend in graduate enrollment has slipped. Community colleges are by far the worst to hit with a 9.4% drop, which is nearly nine times greater than their pre-pandemic loss rate, 1.1% decline. Community colleges fell universally regardless of their location urban, suburban, or rural. Four-year colleges, on the other hand, seem to be faring a lot better. Public and non-profit four years, especially at urban campuses, are down only slightly. But enrollment decline was worst at rural campuses. Interestingly, both for-profit four-year colleges and primarily online institutions that were already online for more than 90% of their students, even before the pandemic, are growing. Also, short-term programs, such as certificates and associate degree programs, are down by four times the pre-pandemic rates, whereas bachelor's degree program enrollments dropped only slightly. Perhaps this could mean that students were thinking this is going to be a short-term crisis, so they decide to delay their enrollment this fall. To summarize, most of the pain at the undergraduate level is in the community college sector. This was a real eye-opener this fall. And were those changes that you just described, uh, were they more concentrated among certain demographic groups or maybe in specific regions of the country? The pandemic appears to have a differential impact on different groups. First, by gender, male enrollment declined by three times the rate of female declines. Also, we expected to see sharper declines among Black, Native American, and Hispanic students because of disproportionate economic and healthy impacts of the pandemic and the subsequent recession not to mention the recent racial unrest. But white students decline just as much as blacks, whereas Hispanics seems to be doing better than we had feared. However, community colleges are a different story. Both black males and Hispanic males fell most sharply, minus 21% and minus 19% respectively whereas women were nearly on par with whites. International students dropped considerably at both graduate and undergraduate level. In fact, 
International Student Group is the only group that declined at the graduate level. There was also regional variation. The Midwest suffered more from enrollment decline, minus 5.7%, followed by the West, the South, and the Northeast, which had minus 3.4%. The national average decline rate of 4% seems to mask the large variation among subgroups and subregions. The report mentions that the biggest declines occurring in higher education enrollment are actually among freshmen and first-time students. I'm curious if you think the pandemic is playing a role in that. In fact, a 16% drop in freshman number was the biggest surprise for us. They are by far the biggest decline of any student group this fall. I've never seen such a steep freshman enrollment drop in my entire career. Freshman enrollment losses account for 69% of the total undergraduate enrollment drop this fall. Pretty significant number. Freshman enrollment drop is very steep in all large institution sectors. Minus 14% at public four years and minus 12% at nonprofit four years over last fall. But it's pretty staggering to see a 23% decline in freshman enrollment at community colleges, especially after prior year when they actually increased slightly. The vast majority of freshmen are 18 to 24 years old of age, but no institution sector gained 18 to 20 year old freshmen. And the only place that gained overall in freshman enrollment was for-profit four-year institutions. So prior to the pandemic, freshman enrollment was pretty stable. A decline of 60% this fall is clearly attributable to the pandemic. I, I do want to discuss some of the potential implications of those enrollment trends um, a little bit later, but for now I want to pivot because the Research Center actually just just released a couple of days prior to us talking here today, new data on student transfer rates. And it seems that they offer some good news for four-year institutions, but also some troubling news for community colleges. Could you tell us what you learned there? Uh, let me speak to the overall trends first. The overall transfer enrollment is down 4.7% from last fall, declining slightly more steeply than undergraduate student enrollment decline generally. Each transfer pathway, however, responded differently. We saw the largest drop in reverse transfers, students transferring from four-year to two-year colleges, minus 18.4%, followed by summer swells, declined by 10.8%, and lateral transfers. Upward transfers from two-year to four-year colleges unexpected increase this fall by 2.6%. Most upward transfer students, they transfer without first finishing an associate degree, and more of them crossed the state lines this fall, which means they enrolled in a four-year college in a different state than where they last enrolled in spring. The increase in upward transfer is largely driven by continuing students, those who maintain enrollment since the COVID-19 outbreak. Some college no degree students, by the way, who had left college without completion before the pandemic started, were less likely to have come back at all this fall. And for those who come back, less than half of them came back transferred. These findings challenge recent predictions about the likely effects of the pandemic, such as an anticipated influx of four-year college students transferring into community colleges this fall. We did not expect more community college students would transfer to a four-year college during the pandemic. So these were some of the surprising results so far. And were those changes in transfer rates experienced evenly across student groups, or were there certain demographic groups that were 
more or less likely to, say, continue in their studies or uh, fall further behind. So the speaking of uh, the students who maintain enrollment, the 77 percent of students who showed up this fall are continuing students who, despite the pandemic-related disruptions, have maintained enrollment from the spring, which is good news. Students who are women, 18 to 20 years old, Asian or Hispanics are generally more likely to continue their enrollment this fall. Among transfer students, we only saw transfer in enrollment increased among Asian students in public four-year and nonprofit four-year institutions. At community colleges, there were far fewer transfer in students among Black and Hispanic students. Upward transfer increases that I just spoke about were largely driven by continuing students, particularly among women, Asians, whites, traditional college-age students. This means Blacks, males, and adult learners, they all fell further behind in the growing number of upward transfer students. Um, so uh, I want to get back to talking about student experiences and um, potential ways forward in a minute. But on the whole, given these two sets of data, do you think that colleges and universities should be concerned right now? As I'm, I'm sure a lot of our, our listeners are aware, a 4% enrollment decline may not sound like much on the surface, but for many institutions, it could be a financial disaster. That's right, Kip. Uh, even before the pandemic, I'm trying to give you some historical perspective to answer the question. Institutions in many parts of the country were already struggling to meet enrollment targets, according to our historical enrollment trend data. Between 1 to 1.5% annual declines overall, with the traditional four-year sectors doing slightly better, community causes slightly worse, and the four profits in free fall until last year. So a 4% decline overall is not as bad as many had a fear, including myself. But what's concerning is that the COVID's impacts are uneven among different types of institutions and students. Community colleges educate between 30 and 40% of all undergraduate students across the country. Our data shows that community colleges are having a particularly hard time right now, facing the enrollment decline of 9.4% overall, nine times steeper than their pre-pandemic loss rate. Enrollments are down in all age groups and all racial ethnic groups. Men impacted much more than women, and freshman enrollment at community colleges declined by 23%. Other learners are less likely to come back this fall. More students transfer to four-year colleges, whereas fewer students are transferring into community colleges. Also, rural public four-year colleges are faring worse than their urban counterparts. So the downward enrollment trends will have financial implications for all affected institutions. So this is obviously an unprecedented situation, but given your experience in the field, I have to ask, is there any indication where we might be headed? Should we expect these kinds of changes to persist for some time, or is there any light at the end of the tunnel? Yes, I get that question quite a lot. As more colleges report data, enrollment picture has worsened. With 54% of institutions reporting, the numbers were being revised downward. So unless the other half reports very positive enrollment numbers in the coming weeks, I think the downward trend is likely to persist for a while. The obvious fundamental question is, when can we expect the pandemic crisis to end? There is another reason why it's very difficult to project student behavior in higher education enrollment. The past behavior doesn't seem to be very useful in predicting the future this time around. 
Usually when the economy is down, we see enrollment go up, especially at community colleges and among adult learners. What we have seen so far is quite the opposite. Although the trend could shift in near future, based on two big trends we've seen so far, steep declines in first-time first-year student enrollment, as well as in FAFSA application numbers, it's reasonable to say it would take years to bring back lower income, disadvantaged young people who would have enrolled in college this fall if there were no pandemic-related disruptions. And that leads to my final question. In your experience, do you think that there's anything that schools, policymakers, or other stakeholders can do to try and address these enrollment impacts or maybe adapt in some way so that they can connect with and support students who may be struggling as a result of the pandemic? The recent data from the Census of Pulse survey shows that before the fall semester began, there were skeptical perceptions about the quality of learning in online-only classes caused many people to rethink their enrollment plan this fall. Also, there are some students out there who thought it was going to be a short-term crisis and they better sit out a year. There appears to be a fear factor at play. Predictions about the likely effects of COVID-19 turn out to be not true in many cases. The anticipated influx of students transferring from four-year colleges to community colleges near home did not happen. Taking summer session courses at a local community colleges to pick up a few additional credits was less common this year. Unlike what we expected, many former students with some college education but no degree who are typically in their late 20s or 30s, did not re-enroll at all this fall. Although I know many institutions and policymakers are already doing it, I think it's critical, as never before, to take the guesswork out of designing your institutions or policy responses and focus on data-driven strategy. With that said, also coming up from us in December is a high school benchmarks report that looks at the COVID-19 effects on immediate college going rates among recent high school graduates. It is important to take the entire pipeline prospect with the equity lens and try to look at all student populations, beginning college students, continuing students, and returning students with a subset of students who are transferring among continuing or returning student groups. I think it would help you address the shifting student demographics by breaking down student groups who would have different needs and therefore more tailored responses are required. We saw some bright spots for higher education this fall. As I mentioned, 77% of students who showed up this fall are continuing students who, despite the pandemic-related disruptions, were able to maintain enrollment from the spring. Their share increased by 3% points because their numbers remain stable from last fall, but freshman enrollments and re-enrollments among adult learners sharply declined. Also, upward transfers from community colleges are up, largely driven by women students, traditional college age students, and Asian and Hispanic students. This is obviously good news for bachelor's degree seeking students as well as for the four-year colleges with increased transfer in enrollment. This may be showing the effects of state policies or campus initiatives to help students transfer more seamlessly. I wonder what this could mean for institutions that now face the enrollment crunch exacerbated by the pandemic. Certainly, it's something to think about. Well, this is just incredibly valuable work, McYoung, and uh, our listeners should know that in addition to the analyses that we discussed here today, the National Student Clearinghouse Research Center will continue to publish regular data on higher education, enrollment, and transfer trends throughout this school year and beyond. And you can find and keep up with those reports at nscresearchcenter.org. McYoung Ryu, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's Research Minutes, presented by the CPRI Knowledge Hub. 
For more episodes or to subscribe to the series, you can find us at researchminutes.org. To share thoughts on today's episode or to suggest a future topic, you can follow us on Twitter at cprehub. That's C-P-R-E-Hub.